Hello, I'm Dr. William Schlosser of Washington State University School of the Environment. This is my classroom. The study of ecology considers population growth with birth rates and death rates, regulation and intraspecific and interspecific competition, mutualism, and predation. Focusing on adaptations, physiological ecology is concerned with the responses of individual organisms to temperature, moisture, light, and other environmental conditions. Closely associated with population and evolutionary ecology is community ecology which deals with the physical and biological structure of communities and community development. To launch into inquiries, we investigate population genetics. Population ecology is evolutionary ecology that deals with the role of natural selection in physical and behavioral adaptations and speciation. Where sexual reproduction is the only form of genetic transfer, the transference of genes with desirable heritable traits is paramount to survival. This plays out for all species, herbivores and carnivores alike. It also plays part for plants and fungi, encompassing all biotic life as we know it. When does asexual reproduction strike a theme of soul genetic material transfer? We call this parthenogenesis. The asexual, all-female whiptail lizard species, the New Mexico whiptail, Aspidiocilus neomexicanus, is a female-only species of lizard, found in the southwestern United States in New Mexico and Arizona, and in the northern Mexico in Chihuahua, is the official state reptile of New Mexico. The whiptail lizard produces via a form of asexual reproduction in which growth and development of embryos occur without fertilization. In animals, parthenogenesis means development of an embryo from an unfertilized egg cell and is component process of apomixis. Gynogenesis and pseudogamy are closely related phenomena in which a sperm or pollen triggers the development of the egg cells in an embryo but makes no genetic contribution to the embryo. The rest of the cytology and genetics of these phenomena are mostly identical to that of parthenogenesis. Parthenogenesis occurs naturally in many plants, some invertebrate animal species, including nematodes, water fleas, some scorpions, aphids, some bees, some phasmidia, and parasitic wasps. This is witnessed in vertebrates such as some fish, amphibians, reptiles, and rarely birds. Normal egg cells form a meiosis and are haploid, with half as many chromosomes as their mother's body cells. Haploid individuals, however, are usually non-viable, and parthenogenetic offspring usually have the diploid chromosome number. The chances for reproductive mutations are still possible, seen mostly during the gynogenesis stage triggering the development of the egg cell into an embryo. This is where random mutations can happen, and where adaptive selection forces may be seen. New research reveals that these lizards maintain genetic richness by starting the reproductive process with twice the number of chromosomes than sexual lizard cells. The researchers found that these species could maintain diversity and form a gamete by pairing their sister chromosomes. The two chromatids form one chromosome, while in sexual species, homogeneous chromosomes in each parent cell are paired. This raises the intriguing possibility that females of some species may switch from sexual reproduction to parthenogenesis by regulating the chromosome content of oocytes entering meiosis. There are cases where females from sexually reproducing species such as Komodo dragons, sharks, and snakes reproduce parthenogenically when mating options are limited. Switching from sexual reproduction to parthenogenesis may allow a female to pass her genes to another generation until a male comes along later. Research also reveals how celebrate lizards maintain a genetic richness resulting from the original hybridization event between two sexual species. Instead of pairing homogeneous chromosomes, corresponding but slightly different chromosomes from each parent, and swapping information, they pair identical sister chromosomes, those duplicated one extra time before entering meiosis, and swap information between them. <laughs> but no matter how much they mix and match, 
The genetic information stays the same, ensuring that nothing ever gets lost. Hmm. Now we know that chromosome duplication and identical chromosome pairing are central to parthenogenesis. We are trying to understand the events that trigger the molecular switch from bisexual to unisexual reproduction. In plants, parthenogenesis is a component process of apomixis. Rhizomes are continuously growing horizontally through the underground stems, which puts out lateral shoots and adventitious roots at intervals. In botany and dendrology, a rhizome is a modified subterranean plant stem that sends out roots and shoots from its nodes. Rhizomes are also called creeping rootstocks. Rhizomes develop from auxiliary buds and grow horizontally underground. The rhizome also retains the ability to allow new shoots to grow upwards. Aspens typically grow in environments that are otherwise dominated by coniferous tree species. Aspens have evolved several adaptations to aid their survival in such environments. One is the flattened leaf pedital, which reduces aerodynamic drag during high winds and decreases the likelihood of trunk or branch damage. Aspens are aided by rhizomatic nature of their root systems. Most aspens grow in large clonal colonies, derived from a single seedling, and spread by means of root suckers. New stems in the colony may appear at up to 30 to 40 meters, or 100 to 130 feet, from the parent tree. Each individual can live for 40 to 150 years above ground, but the root system of the colony is long-lived. In some cases, this is for thousands of years, sending up new trunks as the older trunks die off above the ground. For this reason, it is considered to be an indicator of ancient woodlands. One such colony in Utah, given the nickname Pando, is estimated to be 80,000 years old, making it possibly the oldest living colony of aspens. They are able to survive forest fires because the roots are below the heat of the fire, and new sprouts appear after the fire burns out. Aspen are fire-adapted forest tree species. Many of these ecosystems in Utah, Colorado, Montana, Washington, and Idaho have fire return intervals of about 60 years. This burns the crowding conifers from the stands, killing all terrestrial species. But aspen roots are stimulated by the disruption and send up new clone sprouts rapidly. The competing conifers rely on seeds and enter the stands at a disadvantage to the clone sprouts who have the first in time status, established root systems, and blanket coverage of these sites. The high stem turnover rate combined with clonal growth leads to proliferation in aspen colonies. The high stem turnover regime supports a diverse herbaceous understory. Many ungulates like deer, elk, and moose rely on these aspens as rough grouse, pheasant, and songbirds thrive in the environments. Only occasionally do aspen reproduce through seeds as other tree species normally do. This is one more protection level to ensure reproductive success. Ecological genetics is the study of genetics in natural populations. This contrasts with classical genetics, which works mostly on crosses between laboratory strains and DNA sequence analysis, which studies genes at the molecular level. A ramet is a distinct organism that is part of a group of genetically identical individuals derived from one progenitor, as a tree in a group of trees that all have sprouted from a single parent plant. Genet is a clonal population, where all share the identical genome. The members of a clone can be distinguished from those of a neighboring clone, often by the variety of traits such as leaf size and shape, bark character, branching habit, resistance to disease and air pollution, sex, time of flushing, and autumn leaf color change. Hmm, a clone may turn color earlier or later in the fall or exhibit a different fall color variation than its neighbor aspen clones, thus providing a means to tell them apart. Aspen clones can be less than an acre or up to 100 acres in size. There can be one clone in an aspen grove or there can be many. Same genus and species, but each evolved in response to different needle spawning bed environments. 
Morphology and physiology are different. They spawn at different times of the year, have different body sizes, coloring, and habitat uses specific to their natal spawning land restrictions. All sockeye salmon species have a lake between the ocean and their spawning streams. You will always find a lake and discover how the species uses that lake after hatching and again before spawning. This is where you can discover several critical aspects of salmon's survival characteristics. Genetics is the study of genes, genetic variation, and heritability in all living organisms. The genome is the total genetic material of an organism and includes both the genes and non-coding sequences. A gene is a region of DNA, which is made up of nucleotides and is the molecular unit of heredity. An allele is a variant form of a given gene. Sometimes different alleles result in different observable phenotypic traits, such as different pigmentation. However, most genetic variations result in little or no observable variation. Genetic diversity serves as a way for populations to adapt to changing environments. With more variation, it is more likely that some individuals in a population will possess variations of alleles that are uniquely suited for the environment in which they live. Those individuals are more likely to survive and produce offspring bearing that allele. The population will continue for more generations because of the successes of those individuals. Heredity is the genetic information passing for traits from parents to their offspring either through asexual reproduction or sexual reproduction. This is the process by which an offspring, cell, or organism acquires or becomes predisposed to the characteristics of its parent. Through heredity, variations exhibited by individuals can accumulate and cause some species to evolve through the natural selection of specific phenotype traits. Heritable genetic mutations may take generations to realize. It is not about spontaneous mutations. <laughs> that is something for Hollywood to fantasize about, where we deal with genetics and natural selection. It is as real as the wetness of water. <laughs> you remember these rock pocket mice populations, right? Now, put your thoughts to this and explain which form of speciation this is. You have all the tools firmly attached in your mind. So? Explain it to yourself. Species distribution is a way a biological taxon is spatially arranged. The geographic limits of a particular taxon's distribution explain its range. Patterns of distribution change depending on the scale at which they are viewed, from the arrangement of individuals within a small family unit to patterns within the population, or the distribution of the entire genus as a whole. Species distribution is not to be confused with dispersal, which is the movement of individuals away from their region of origin or from a population center of high density. Mechanistic models for niche apportionment are biological models and used to explain relative species abundance distributions. Niche apportionment models describe how species break up resource pools in multidimensional space determining the distribution of abundance of individuals among species. The relative abundance of species are usually expressed as a Whitaker plot or rank abundance plot, where species are ranked by the number of individuals on the x-axis plotted against the log relative abundance of each species as the y-axis. The relative abundance can be measured as a relative number of individuals within species or the relative biomass of individuals within them. The mechanistic models that describe these plots work under the assumption that rank abundance plots are based on a rigorous estimate of the abundance of individuals within species, and these measures represent the actual species abundance distribution. Hmm. Furthermore, whether using the number of individuals as the abundance measure, or the biomass of individuals, these models assume that this quality is directly proportional to the size of the niche occupied by an organism. One suggestion is that abundance measured as the number of individuals may exhibit lower variances than those of using biomass. Thus, some studies using abundance for niche allocation may overestimate the evenness of a community.
As biomass is a biotic material, many highly efficient biochemical processes have developed in nature to break down the molecules of which biomass is composed. And many of these biochemical conversion processes can be harnessed. In ecology, local abundance is the relative representation of a species in a particular ecosystem. It is usually measured as the number of individuals found per sample. The ratio of abundance of one species to one or multiple other species living in an ecosystem is referred to as relative species abundances. Abundance is contrasted with, but typically correlated to, incidence, which is the frequency with which one species occurs within a sample. When high abundance is accompanied by low incidence, it is considered locally or sporadically abundant. A variety of sampling methods are used to measure abundance. For larger animals, these may include spotlight counts, track counts, and roadkill counts, hmm, as well as presence at monitoring stations. In many plant communities, the abundances of plant species are measured by plant cover. That is, the relative area covered by different plant species. Ecology is not synonymous with environmentalism, natural history, or environmental science. It overlaps with the closely related sciences of evolutionary biology, genetics, and ethology. An important focus for ecologists is to improve the understanding of how biodiversity affects ecological function. Ecologists seek to explain life processes, interactions, and adaptations. In biology, a population is all the organisms of the same group or species which live in a particular geographical area and have the capability of successfully interbreeding. The area of sexual population is the area where interbreeding is potentially possible between any pair within the area, and where the probability of interbreeding is greater than the probability of crossbreeding with individuals from other populations. How we view the population data adds our description of its characteristics. These descriptive tools are used to assist how we communicate these data. The clumpiness of the species is not a random process. It is very directional, and survivors and thrivers benefit from the juxtaposition to others of the same species. Some species need to be evenly distributed. Others need to be clumpy. This scene shows the tree species. Hmm, what about animals? You might describe an elk herd or a covey of quail. You usually do not hear references to a herd of cougars, right? Well, each species has its own dispersion characteristics, and not all performances are copied. In uniform dispersion, individuals of a population are spaced uh, more or less evenly. One example of uniform dispersion comes from plants that secrete toxins to inhibit growth of nearby individuals, a phenomenon called allopathy. We can also find uniform dispersion in animal species, where individuals stake out and defend territories. In random dispersion, individuals are distributed randomly, without a predictable pattern. An example of random dispersion comes from dandelions and other plants that have wind-dispersed seeds. The seeds spread widely and sprout where they happen to fall, as long as the environment is favorable, has enough soil, water, nutrients, and light. Age distribution in population studies is the proportionate numbers of individuals in successive age categories in a given population. A population with a persistently high fertility, for instance, has a large proportion of children and a small proportion of aged individuals. One of the easiest and most convenient methods of estimating or predicting population growth, decline, or stability is to measure the proportion of young to old in a population. This measure is called the population's age ratio. This information can be depicted graphically in an age pyramid. Age ratios are commonly used to compare changes in a single population between years or within the same year for different populations. Age pyramids for small wildlife populations may show a large percentage of the population never makes it to age 3. 
This tells the landowner and manager that you cannot stockpile game by not hunting in hopes of having a larger breeding population in the spring, unless there is sufficient habitat to support the animals. It also provides another important lesson. It is difficult to increase small game bird populations by stocking pin-raised birds. Most of these birds will die off in the first winter unless the habitat is present to support the larger population while the cage-raised birds learn how to live in the wild. If habitat is present, the birds would probably be there already. Remember the temporal characteristics of ecology. What you saw yesterday, or ten years ago, is not what you would expect to see tomorrow, or in another ten, hundred, or thousand years. Change is the constant factor for our natural world. Fecundity is the potential for production of an organism or population measured by the number of gametes, eggs, seed set, or asexual propagules. Fecundancy is similar to fertility, the natural capacity to produce offspring. A lack of fertility is infertility, while the lack of fecundity is called sterility. Resources are often limited in a habitat, and many species may compete to get a hold of them. Elk along this river compete for food, nutrients, water, and space. They also compete for all these resources with deer, beavers, and other herbivores in the same space. We explored the concept of an ecological niche and saw how species having similar niches leads to competition. We explored how species can evolve by natural selection to occupy different niches, thus divvying up resources and minimizing direct competition. <laughs>